Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be doing an album review. I'm going to be taking a look at this, which is the new album by Paul Heaton and Jackie Abbott called NK Pop. So I'll just be doing the usual thing in this video, giving you a bit of background information about the album, and then showing you my vinyl copy of it here, and then looking at each of the album songs in detail. So yeah, firstly just want to like apologise why it's taken so long like to like for me to get onto this review because um like yeah like I ordered this this is like a special vinyl version which I will show like in like a minute um like but it took so long like to like arrive and then like we were like away like for like a week so I've yeah like I only got this yesterday like this actual like album so I'll hopefully get this video out video out like as soon like as I can before the album becomes old news but no um like yeah this is um like yeah the latest one Paul Heaton Jackie yeah, but of course former members of the Beautiful South and in Paul Heaton's case the House Martins this is the fifth album they have made together like as a duo and um, following um albums from i think from 2014 was when they did what have we become and then they did another great album after that wisdom laughter and lines and they just yeah continue to make um like some like um like yeah really great reliable albums like ever since and this album follows a very similar format to like those previous um albums produced by um john williams who was who has worked with Paul Heaton ever since the House Martin's days? Like I don't think I don't think continuously. I think Heaton has worked with other producers, but certainly like I think like for like kind of like this kind of career comeback like he's been on like over like the last well, like almost decade now. And um, I think like he chose yeah to work with John Williams like as a kind of comfortable pair of hands um, and like yeah like a really like a good solid producer. And also notably, like on like all these albums, he's worked with like the same group of musicians. So like for some of these songs, he's writing with a guy called Johnny Lexus, and then you've got um, like yeah, like the same job, the same bass player bass player like he's had like since like he started touring like again like with Jackie Abbott and again in terms of like kind of working method Heaton is on this album working well within like his comfort zone like his kind of methods of songwriting is to write his lyrics in somewhere cold and rainy so he'll go to somewhere like Holland or maybe even just stay like in like the UK but then when it comes to like the music like he'll go off um, to somewhere sunny to write the music so that's what kind of gives all the songs this kind of conflict between the music and like the lyrics and gives like yeah like it's basically like it's basically like his trademark style in terms of sort of commercial success this album has done pretty well it hit number one in the uk so um right which is as good as you can ask for really following in the footsteps of manchester calling which was his last album and which also got to number one um right which is quite a big deal because that was his first number one album since um 1989 and quench like the beautiful south album and in terms of critical response Response. This has been mostly positive, like I would say. I've certainly not seen a review of this where it got like any less than three stars. So all round has been like yeah, quite a well received album. So I wish I'd show you my vinyl copy of it here. And as I was saying, this is a kind of special edition version of it here. So I'll just get it out of its off 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 like a plastic sleeve there. And so there's the back of it there. Um, and that's the number. So this is 154 out of a thousand. And firstly, the artwork. I really like the artwork on this. I think this is probably like his. And that's so like a lot of like the other albums he did had these kind of paintings on them, which I think looked really nice. But then he kind of hadn't done that for his last couple. Um, so, 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 like, yeah, like, I'm glad to see him like go back to that because I think like it's really nice artwork here. There's the back of it there, and then the inside isn't any, isn't anything too special. It's just the it's just the lyrics in the gatefold, and then the inner sleeve looks like so. So again, just more credits, um, and then the title. But this is like I said, the special version. So this is a picture disc. So you've got that there on the B side, Jackie. And then Paul on the other side, which is really cool. Like, yeah, and yeah, so I'm very glad to get my hands on this. I think this might go quite rare quite soon. So, yeah, very happy to get this. Um, this was sold for, I think, a company called Blood Records. Unfortunately, though, the unfortunately though unfortunately though the copy like it it wasn't in shrink wrap like or anything and it came with it it had these tears along the bottom and the side here which is quite disappointing because it was it was quite poorly packaged but like yeah like i doubt i would get any money back for that or anything because it is such a it's such like a limited edition okay so i'll now go over each of the album songs in detail so i'll score each track out of 10 and then use those scores to give us a overall percentage marking for the album. The 
first track up is called The Good Times. Now, this is a really good opener, like I would say, um, like to the album. Musically, it's very upbeat. You've got a lot of nice brass like on there, and it's just an all around like a good start to the album. Lyrically, it's a tale of kind of like two sort of like a um, like um, like a pub landlord, like and like his wife and how their kind of business sort of goes like up and down, like in much a kind of similar way to like their uh, personal personal relationship. Like the chorus goes, like they lived through the good times, struggled through bad times. The pub it the pub it reopened then closed. Put up a new sign, took down the old sign. New problems only arose. Um, so yeah, like perhaps maybe also got kind of like undertones of kind of um, like sort of like these kind of pubs and venues opening up like after COVID, like sort of like struggled through bad times, like perhaps like that. That might be like also like what was in his mind like writing like a song like this. But no, a, a good song, maybe just a little bit like on like the long side. I think it's well over four minutes this, which is quite long like for like a Paul Heaton song. But no, a good track to kick off and would get a nine out of ten. Next up now we have uh, Too Much For One, Not Enough For Two, which was one of the, it was, this was like the second single from the album, and I must say it didn't blow me away like as a single at, at all this song, I mean it's a decent song, but it's nothing we haven't heard before like from Paul Heat, and I think this song could have easily slotted into any of his last um, like five albums. Lyrically, it's a mildly amusing song about a couple who are both kind of cheating and sort of seeing like other people. Is like, like, sort of like the first line goes, that time I caught you texting, then you went for that long drive. I headed out immediately to hit my latest dive. I just needed company, you to be alone. Your face, it told me everything that wasn't on your phone. So a good, like, yeah, again, good lyrics, like, as you would expect, like, from Paul Heaton. But musically, it's just a bit predictable, I think. And, like, again, um, like, maybe not the strongest choice, like, as a single. Like, Apart from the bridges. Up now we have Who Built the Pyramids. Now this is a slower ballad like on the album. Begins, well so it begins that way. There's sort of like piano and a nice vocal like from um, Jackie. And perhaps um, lyrically this one is about uh, how like technical technological change doesn't always lead like to better things like a better outcomes like for people like he asks like a lot of questions like on like this song like concerning like different things like he sort of like concludes like each um like each brave new invention is greeted as such but for love and affection it never does much so it is a good song this i think but again a bit like too much for one a bit undistinctive, a little bit like this could be on any of his albums sort of thing. It doesn't, it's not really artistically, he's not really pushing himself much like with this song, like I have to say. I've tried to be brave, emotions I'd say, but that's what Okay, next one up is called I Drove Her Away With All My Tears. Now this is a really good song, I think. It's a more um, upbeat kind of country style, style song. I mean, it's quite a fun song um, with good lyrics about basically people like who like cry about everything. He sings on it like, I've tried to be brave, emotions I'd say, but that's when H2O it just appears. Because I loved her, but I drove her away with all my tears. And then there's some good references to sort of different like kind of like local dialects. Now they kind of like it says like in Sheffield we still call we still call we still call it roaring. In Glasgow they have a good greet. So um, like yeah, like I really like the song and again it's upbeat it's a fun track so for me we'll get a 9 out of 10 when the world will actually listen when you stole Next up is another good track. It's called When the World Would Actually Listen. And this one, um, I think, sounds a little bit different from the rest of the album and also from a lot of his other more recent output. output. I mean, it's not a wildly different song, but it is just like there's slightly more playful synth lines going on like on here. And then there's a really cool kind of bass breakdown as well. So again, he's, I suppose on this track he is trying out different things. And that's probably like, what makes me like it like a little bit more. But as well as that, you've got a great lyric. It's about basically a loss of a loss of confidence, like in like the world, and like the disappearing and lag and like and lag and like a disappearing feeling of like optimism. Things I call it like there was a day once when the sun it shone so brightly, and a day there seemed a glimmer of real hope. When the compliments came daily, also nightly, when the world would actually listen when you spoke, like goes like the chorus. And I think it's all round a really strong song again. So for me, that one would get a 9 out of 10. Um, we will love you still. 
next up now which closes off the first side is called Still. Now this was the first single from the album and well I'll say as much as a single because it's very much uh, well 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 I thought like when it was released it was just going to be like a standalone song considering that like, the subject matter like of like the song which is basically about the loss like of like an infant child like sort of like either and it, and, and like it leaves it quite general like you're not sure like if he's referring to either a kind of sort of stillborn baby like all like sort of like uh, like all like dying like like all like a child that like, was died like during the, like during like in like infancy it sings like on it like I still feel your heartbeat the, the the tiniest drum still feel your fingers tight round my thumb your departure destroyed us but so glad you could come and we will love you still I mean it's a beautiful lyric and it's a really touching song and like yeah like it's a really like yeah like I suppose a brave move to write a song kind of about and um, like such like a kind of sad and sort of like yeah like sort of like powerful like subject matter um, but it isn't a song which I would necessarily go back to too often and um, like all like all like sort of play like out of like enjoyment but that's really not the point like with this song it is a it is a powerful song and I think it's um, like yeah like a really um, like great vocal performance and like great like and like a great like beautiful lyric there like from Heaton. So for me, yeah, still um, would get an eight out of ten. Next up is called I Ain't Going Nowhere This Year. Now this song um, has grown on me quite a bit since I first heard it. Begins quite a kind of bluesy song, like I would say, with a kind of guy, Heaton's singing it very deep and he's kind of saying like he's wanting like to travel and go on like new experiences, like but he can't because he's stuck like in like his country or like he can't like for like whatever reason. I think perhaps this is one which is um, maybe like, maybe about like the pandemic and the experience like of like COVID and that. Sings like, well, I've got myself a wanderlust that just can't be denied. Plane ticket got me booked. My po- my my taxi's parked outside, but travel's been cancelled. My happiness pied, and I ain't going nowhere this year. So it's a fun song, and about yeah, like kind of like that kind of shared experience of kind of yeah being stuck, like yeah, like yeah, you're wanting to get out, but you can't kind of thing. Um, like so, like yeah, like I like this song like overall, but for me, what maybe marks it down a little bit is is the ending. It kind of does this kind of big kind of fanfare ending, which I think is a bit a bit unnecessary. But overall, a good song though, so another um, 8 out of 10 there. Sunny side up, burn the express and the mail. Next now is called A Sunny Side Up. Now this is a more political song, probably one of the most political songs he's done um, for quite a while. I'm not saying that, I mean, fat off, fat Fat off the land from Manchester Calling Light was quite political, like, I suppose. But basically, this one is kind of covering the role, like, of the media, like, in, like, the spread, like, of, like, misinformation. Again, like, the song Heaton takes aim at various kind of, like, right-wing newspapers. He sings, like, Sunny Side Up, Burn the Express and the Mail. The key to real democracy is throw the Eton mob in jail. And then goes on to say, like, in the 70s and the 80s, we were living side by side. Now the neighbourhood is either scared or full on radicalised so a great lyric it flows really well but I suppose like that line there about the 70s and the 80s living side by side I suppose it's a slightly rose tinted um, look back on that kind of era where you did have a lot of things like the National Front and Margaret Thatcher like and all that going on so I suppose it's maybe is kind of hard is kind of maybe being like overly optimistic or overly nostalgic about like that kind of era when there was of course difficulties going on then and like a divided society like even then um like so that's maybe what maybe makes me school the song down like a little bit um but aside from that as well again musically it's not maybe quite as uh, quite as uh, quite as adventurous as some of like as some of as some of like the other songs and i think musically could have easily fitted in again on any of his recent albums Next one is called uh, Baby It's Cold Inside. Now this is a 
um, initially I would have said quite a forgettable song. Musically, it's it is this kind of ballad. It's kind of a sort of like an R and B style ballad, but it's a bit yeah, like I like I think it was a little bit weak musically. But then upon kind of studying the lyrics, I perhaps take a kind of different view, like off like the song now. So basically, again, quite a um, so like topical song, basically about kind of like male like harassment, like off like women. So it starts off with quite so sort of like universally kind of these sort of things like theatre cues, traditional pubs, unwanted touches and overlong hugs. But in like the last verse then we get like quite a damning line actually about he says like once they get started rarely it stops arm round your shoulder at top of the pops which we all know like who like that like is like about. So again it's a song writing subject which very few like other songwriters I think would dare to touch but I think Keaton does a good job like on like this song like off like yeah like kind of like commenting like on like on this so I think he does it I think he does it well again I just wish that musically it was maybe a little bit more a little bit more like adventurous or um like or different but I suppose on the other hand it kind of is it kind of catches you off guard a little bit so I suppose there is that Next up is called A New Fella. Now this is for me the weakest song like on the album and again probably like for similar reasons to why I've like my kind of negative points about a lot of like the other songs. It basically just sounds like a generic Paul Heaton song you know like off like today. It could have easily fitted like on any off like the five other albums and even subject matter wise it's, he's not really doing anything too kind of like out of like the ordinary like with this song. It's basically about someone who's kind of like juggling part as he sings like it's out with the old and in with the new not with that partner that's stuck on your shoe not onwards and upwards but backwards and down if your current or ex is a clown and jackie does take the lead on this and i think she does a good job singing it but again i think it's it is listenable like and like enjoyable but it just lacks that lyrical punch like of some of the other songs like or something musically different which makes it stand out and plus as well i think it i think it ends quite abruptly this one as well it kind of just sort of finishes like like after that two minutes and without really resolving itself it, it shouldn't it feels like he almost couldn't be bothered to write more lyrics to this one or kind of finish the song it's kind of like the feel i get which of course is probably like not true like but it kind of yeah like it feels like that like a little bit because it isn't a kind of musical re resolution like to like the song so yeah new fella for me a weaker track um but would get yeah a six out of ten because i'm not british i'm not english from my mother's womb the penultimate song now is called My Mother's Womb. Now this is um, a slightly more political track, this one here. And it starts off about, yeah, how there is a lack of kind of serious debate around issues and the fact that I guess people are more likely or like or like less likely to call out kind of like corruption like all kind of bad things happening like to like the country like he sings like there's a conversation not happening and a lack of real debate there's a sickening sound of silence around half past very late um, but then like the chorus line then becomes a kind of a uh, kind of yeah rallying call against like nationalism he sings like so take my passport in your hand but never you presume because I'm not British I'm not English and from my my mother's womb so it's quite a good lyrical theme you know like sort of like a kind of like concept you know like I'm like I'm not like I don't I'm not proud of my country I'm from my I'm from my mother's womb kind of thing um, and like that and musically it's got a slightly harder edge to it than like your kind of typical Paul Heaton song like the guitars are turned up here which I think works considering the kind of slightly angry and slightly bitter like subject matter so I like this song um, like overall and that would get a 8 out of 10 from me his master's game divide and rule okay and then we close the album with for me with for me, one of like the strongest songs like on here, probably the strongest, like um, strongest like off like the lot, his master's game, which I think is like yeah a really great song, another more political song. This one here about kind of like about the kind of like. 
division which people want to cause again like society like to further certain like sort of like political like agendas these things they call it to pit to pitch the state against the folk, to turn the white against the yoke, to pitch the folk against the state, to do your job and whip up hate, goes like the chorus. But then you've also, that's been teamed with a really interesting musical backdrop. You've got a kind of, it starts quite minimalistic, this one here, with a kind of um, very catchy, infectious um, brass line. I think it's a, it's either like, it's either like a, uh, it's either like a tenor horn doing it, or like even maybe like a little like brass like ensemble. But that's, you've got like this kind of very catchy hook to like the song. And then I think Jackie's doing like a wee back into it as well. Sounds really good, really unique sound to it, I think. And it's this kind of musical, like adventurousness, which I think is missing from a from like a lot of like the rest like off like the album and then the song just builds up really organically and it becomes the ideal closer to the album so for me his his master's game easily the best track on here and for me would get a 10 out of 10. Okay, so overall, this album would score 79%. So I think this is a good, strong album here from Paul Heaton, but a very safe and very predictable record. I think at this stage, again, like his career, I mean, he's got absolutely nothing to prove, so he can, like, if he enjoys making records like this, like, which are very similar, you know, similar kind of musical sounds and sort of, like, vibe, fair enough, you know, like, if that's what he wants to do, stay, like, in his comfort zone, that's fine, but I just think it would be refreshing to hear him maybe work with either different musicians or maybe, like, a different producer, um, and maybe kind of push himself a little bit more, like, to make um, something, like, a little bit different. But, but, like, at the same time as that, this is still a great album. His songwriting is still sharp and is still, like, he's, again, he's tackling subjects on here, which I think um, most other songwriters, like, wouldn't dare to touch. Things like, yeah, like, sort of, like, the loss of, like, an infant, like, on Still, um, and sort of, like, um, like, yeah, like, sort of, like, more political songs, like, on, like, things like, yeah, Baby It's Cold Inside, My Mother's Womb, and Sunny Side Up. But, like, I do still maintain that I think it would do him a world of favours to maybe try something a little bit different that like, would be interesting like from like a massive Paul Heaton fan back like, to here because like as I said all these newer albums they are starting to meld into one like a little bit like in terms like of like sound like and style. So yes I hope you have enjoyed my review there of uh, Paul Heaton and Jackie Abbott's NK Pop. So um, so yes if you've got any requests for future reviews Please do leave them down below in the comments, and I will see you all next time for the next video. Goodbye.